Hey everyone, it's Belinda. One of the most exciting things about buying our first house was the pool that came with it. I grew up swimming competitively back in Dubai, so the idea of having a pool in our backyard was not only a luxury, it was a dream come true for me. But I didn't know anything about pool maintenance when we got this house. And sure, we could have just hired someone, but where's the fun in that, right? Um, so when I started researching pool maintenance, all these new terms were thrown at me, like algaecide, pool shock, pH level increasers, pH level reducers, calcium hardness levels, cyanuric acid, and I didn't know exactly what each of them did. So in a series of videos, I'm going to explain to you what these pool chemicals do, and this video is going to focus on pool shock or chlorine. Let's go back inside before the neighbor's dogs start barking. After a lot of trial and error, I have one secret for all you pool owners out there. Understand the ingredients. Pool chemicals are marketed under many vague names, and if you don't understand what chemicals you're using and what they do, you're going to spend thousands on unnecessary stuff. First of all, the idea that you are chlorinating your pool is a misnomer. You aren't adding just chlorine to your pool because chlorine, or Cl2, in its elemental form is a toxic gas and it's heavier than air. It can burn your throat and your lungs and irritate your eyes and your nose. What you are adding when you shock your pool is a stable compound that contains many elements, one of them being chlorine. When this compound reacts with water, it creates an acid that kills or oxidizes the microorganisms and bacteria in your pool to form chloramines or combined chlorine. There are three types of pool shock that are most commonly used. The first is sodium dichlor or what's commonly known as just dichlor. The second is calcium hypochlorite or calhypo. And the third is sodium hypochlorite, commonly known as bleach. The first thing I'm going to talk about is sodium dichlor. Now, pool time and Clorox are the most popular brands out there. They both have the same ingredients, they just differ in price. The active ingredients are sodium dichlor s triazine trione at 63.05%, trace amounts of copper at 0.26%, and other ingredients at 36.69%, which total up to 100. But what's below those ingredients is more important, which is the available chlorine at 39%. One pound of full time shock, which you get at Home Depot, is 498, and one pound of Clorox, which I purchased in bulk at Costco, comes to around 291 per pound. The basic structure of dichlor is cyanuric acid. The three hydrogen atoms in cyanuric acid are substituted with two chlorine and one sodium atom. When dichlor reacts with water, it quickly turns into hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ions, which is what's known as free chlorine. This free chlorine then attacks foreign invaders and other microscopic threats in the water. The advantages of using sodium dichlor are that it's very fast dissolving. It can be directly added to your pool without pre-dissolving it. It also has a pH of around 7, which is neutral, so it doesn't affect the pH levels in your pool. It's also very easy to transport. You can usually find them in these one pound bags. Now the disadvantages. It's highly volatile. Do not, under any circumstance, mix it with calhypo, which I'll discuss next. It also leads to the buildup of cyanuric acid, which is the base structure of dichlor. If you have too little cyanuric acid in your pool, then sunlight just eats away all the chlorine ions. But too much cyanuric acid creates a chlorine lock, which means that the chlorine ions are rendered useless. The last disadvantage is that it has to be manually added to your pool. You can't just put it in a dispenser and expect it to slowly dissolve over time. The next thing we're going to talk about is calcium hypochlorite or calhypo. The main ingredients of calhypo are calcium hypochlorite at 73%, other ingredients at 27%, but more importantly, the total available chlorine is 70%. I paid $115 for this 50 pound bucket of calhypo, which comes to about 228 per pound. The chemical formula of calhypo is CaOCl2 twice. When you add it to water, it forms hypochlorous acid and calcium hydroxide. Once again, hypochlorous acid can break down into hydrogen and chloride ions, which kill the bacteria in your pool. The pros of using calhypo are that it's very strong. The available chlorine is usually 70% or over. 
It's also fast acting once it's pre-dissolved in a bucket of water. Now you'll see a warning sign on all these uh, pool shocks that say do not pre-dissolve it. But I think that it's just a liability thing because if you don't pre-dissolve CalHypo, it can lead to a buildup of these granules in your pool filter. Anyway, it also comes in sealed plastic tubs that make it fairly easy to transport. And lastly, it's the most cost effective of the three. Now, the disadvantage of using CalHypo is that it doesn't dissolve very fast. So I found that it has to be pre-mixed in a bucket of water and then poured in the pool. And this can be dangerous since it's an acidic solution, so it can burn your skin and even stain the ground. Oops. It's also unstabilized, meaning that it doesn't have any cyanuric acid in it. So you have to make sure that the cyanuric acid levels in your pool are just right before you add this solution to your pool. It also has a very high pH, which could alter your pool's pH levels. Since the byproduct of this CalHypo water reaction is calcium hydroxide, it can lead to an increase in calcium hardness in the pool. So keep an eye out for that. It's also very volatile, and I repeat, do not mix it with dichlor. Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about sodium hypochlorite or bleach. Now, the main ingredients are sodium hypochlorite at 6.05%, other ingredients at 93.95%. But this yields only 5.75% of available chlorine. You could get a concentrated version of bleach, but the available chlorine in that is still around 10%. One gallon of this costs around $4.3. The chemical formula of hypochlorite is NaOCl. When you add it to water, it once again forms hypochlorous acid and sodium hydroxide. The hypochlorous acid and chloride ions kill the microorganisms in your pool. The pros of using bleach as opposed to the other two are that it's a very readily available household cleaner and it's fairly inexpensive. It's also fast working since it's a solution. The disadvantage of using bleach is that it has such a low concentration of available chlorine, you have to add a lot of it in order for it to work. It's also unstabilized, so the cyanuric acid levels in your pool have to be right before you use it. And it also has a high pH levels, so it could mess with the levels in your pool. That's it, now you understand how the three most commonly used pool shocks work. I found for our pool that CalHypo works best, uh, but I know that Dichlor could work better for other pools because every pool is different. Let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful and what works best in your pool. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.